Hello, my name is Rupinder Syal and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a controversial piece of news, a paper that has been released which has been gathering a lot of controversy and that is the creation of human monkey chimeric embryos. This is a remarkable piece of achievement as well as a controversial uh, piece of news. So let's dive into it. Now Chimera is a Greek creature. Now ever since the creation of recombinant DNA technology techniques, uh, we have had chimeric DNA molecules. So whenever we take DNA molecules from two or more, two or more different species, and we combine them, for example, in a plasmid, for example, here is a human gene, in a yeast vector for example or a bacterial vector so this is a recombinant dna and this combination does not exist in nature but that's how many of the biotechnology products are being produced nowadays for example human insulin which is available in the market readily it's called humulin right guess how it is produced it is produced by inserting the gene for human insulin which is a human gene into bacteria bacteria act as factories produce lots of insulin and we purify that and we give them to the patients and that's how many diabetic diabetics get their insulin nowadays earlier it was from the pig cadavers and i don't think we need to go back into that age where we need to get our insulin from dead pigs now here what has happened is we have created chimeric embryos and the researchers who performed this research they were driven by two main motivations so those two motivations are number one lack of organ donors so in us alone 8000 people die every year due to lack of potential organ donors although many people are on the organ donation registry but 80 percent of the people who want a kidney for example and there are 12 percent who need a liver although liver can be donated by a living donor also still 8000 people die every year so lack of proper organs is a big problem and if we can figure out a way to biotechnologically grow these organs outside in some other system that would be great help the other motivation that these researchers had was to study how different cells interact especially in this context of a developing embryo so we have this embryo which contains human cells and monkey cells very much related how do they signal how do they interact with each other how do they communicate with each other that was the driving motivation of this study so i think we need to keep those in mind now chimeras are also very very normal and there have been multiple studies nowadays which have documented how chimeras can happen for example there was this case reported in 2019 by forensic scientists where a person's entire dna was not his own it was replaced by a, the dna of his bone marrow transplant donor so even his cheek swabs even his semen everything had dna of his donor so he had become a chimera he didn't have his own DNA anymore. There were some tissues that had his own original DNA, but in many of the tissues, it was his donor's DNA. Okay, so chimeras are weird phenomena, but they are pretty much well established. Another type of chimera that usually happens, and it happens in a lot of pregnancies, and that is the vanishing twin, where one of the twins is actually it, it dies and the tissues of that twin are actually absorbed by the mother as well as the growing fetus so the baby that is born is a chimera because it has genetic components of the of the two twins right? it has its own genome as well as in some parts of its body some cells they contain a different type of genome so chimeras are not that foreign they happen in nature also now this is the paper that was published recently by cell okay uh, led by the groups of VGG at State Key Lab of Primate Bio 
Medical Research in China, in Kunming Province, and also Juan Carlos Ispisua Belmonte at Salk Institute. So these two researchers, they set up those studies. Most of the research was done in Spain as well as in China because in US there are severe restrictions on doing this kind of research. Essentially what they did was, and this is a screenshot from their graphical abstract, which you can find and the paper is available for free. They used human extended pluripotent stem cells. These are modified form of pluripotent stem cells. These are induced stem cells. So they are not, not isolated from embryos. And they took monkey blastocysts. This monkey is the crab eating macaque. So evolutionarily, it has been very recently diverged from humans as compared to the previous chimera making attempts which were directed at rats, mice. So they were not successful. But since macaques, monkeys and humans are pretty much evolutionarily much closer as compared to rats and mice, they hoped that this might work. So they injected 25 of these cells, these human cells into these blastocysts and this was grown ex vivo outside the organism so not in the monkey mother this was grown in a petri dish and they allowed them to grow they tracked their growth and saw like how was the, how were they growing they also injected and inserted a gene which is called the td tomato this is a fluorescent marker to track which are the human cells and which are the monkey cells and they did a lot of analysis especially gene expression analysis on these cells so they did the single cell rna seq for these cells to follow the gene expression programs followed by human cells so there are three different especially three different possibilities here one is the human cells will grow as they would have normally grown stem cells the other is the monkey cells will also grow just like the normal monkey embryo cells and the third is they both will grow a little bit differently so actually what they found was that they grew for some time in the same fashion that they would have normally done and then they interacted and the the developmental trajectory was different for these cells as compared to their normal behavior and this led to important insights about the signaling pathways involved in cell cell communication so uh, one of the main points was these stem cells were incorporated into monkey embryos until days post fertilization 19 so they started with dpf6 which is to say that these embryos were six days old after fertilization days post fertilization and they followed them to dpf19 at that time there were no live embryos left so they could only track until dpf19 so evidently these embryos were not healthy they were not you know growing very well they were sick embryos as many developmental biologists who have commented on the study have also pointed out that these are not growing happily these are not happy cells or happy embryos now they found that these stem cells contributed cells to multiple lineages epiblast which actually gives rise to the embryo hypoblast which gives rise to the yolk sac as well as the extra embryonic mesenchyme which forms the membrane that surrounds the embryo they found that they could not form the trophectoderm which is the nutritive layer so that is another insight that they had from this study and the gene expression in cells were closely followed by single cell RNA seq. Now it raised a lot of alarms for bioethicists, right? For example, Kristen Matthews at Rice University, who was asked to comment on this study, you say that at what point are you taking something and using it for organs when it actually is starting to think and have logic? It's a valid question, and I think there are multiple ways to answer this concern. I am personally in favor of these studies in terms of crossing the line i think it's a pretty interesting line of research that we should follow uh, if we can uh, make sure that we don't cross the ethical lines but i think these concerns like for example for from kristen matthews i think they are overblown because even if we consider normal pig embryos normal mice embryos normal 
you know monkey embryos they are they are they also think you know they will grow and they will form adult monkeys rats and mice they will also think they will have logic you know even crows have been shown to have logic so i think this ignores a lot of recent biological insights about uh, the cognition abilities of many animals i think of course monkeys are very very close to humans so we have an anthropomorph anthropomorphic bias towards using them for something like organs but i think the research is pretty interesting although uh, the time will tell how it is allowed to progress or not okay let me know what you think about it if you have any doubts or concerns or questions if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for such educational videos till the next time we meet take care and bye bye